Hey folks, Roy here. I just want to do a quick review of these two battery testers that I recently picked up to test capacity of various batteries. Um, sealed lead acid batteries, uh, regular lead acid batteries, AGM, lithium iron phosphate, lithium iron, lithium polymer, whatever. Um, my main purpose is very low amp draw, um, 0.25C uh, discharge uh, to see how many amp hours capacity I can pull out of the battery to its safe low voltage cutoff. And the unit I have used for years and years and years is this hobby uh, Triton uh, charge discharger. It's a hobby charger. I bought this back in 04, 2004. Um, I just have it powered off of an old Dell power supply, off tapped off the 12 volt rail. Problem with this though is you can't change um, the voltage. Uh, you can't vary the voltage. Uh, it only does certain number of cells, um, but it's 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 been good for lithium iron, lead acid, NiCad, and nickel metal. Uh, but when I stepped into the lithium iron phosphate um, game, uh, lithium iron phosphate, um, I needed something else. Um, not only to just charge them, I just bought a regular wall wart um, lithium iron phosphate charger lead acid charger this has worked well for me uh, but i want to also check the capacity all right enough talking here this is a maker's hawk from amazon uh, they also sell this um, from aliexpress and probably uh, various other sites of course but this is the first one i bought i bought this one from amazon and uh, it was fifty dollars and pretty much does everything I need it to do, um, just not as easy as this unit, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, this does have a low voltage cutoff that you can dial in, and it in fact does stop the discharge of the battery. So if it doesn't have a BMS, um, uh, you can save your battery, so that's good. What I mainly did not like about this unit is the uh, control interface with this one momentary press and having to press it multiple times and cycle through um, very unuser friendly um, very unfriendly user unfriendly um, and also the potentiometers here for current adjustment this is a fine this is a course um, jumps around a lot and that's pretty much it um, Everything else did what it needed, what I needed it to do. Um, I will say from a construction standpoint, by, by the way, this is a max 150 watt unit. This one over here is 185, but again, I'm not gonna be doing things up in the 20 amp discharge range. I'm just, I don't need to do that. But the, uh, the heat sink on this is very uh, lightweight. You can, see, you can see the fins there, they will bend fairly easily. Um, but again, this unit is $50, um, very difficult to adjust uh, for the low voltage cutoff. Um, it, it also does not have a time delay like this one has. Uh, it also does not have um, a uh, uh, four, um, four landing or sense, vol sense voltage and load, load line um, capability as this one does which is a little more accurate, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but it does pretty much everything this one does. This one has a breakout uh, for your different USB packs, you know, like you've got a power bank here, and you want to, uh, you want to do a uh, capacity check. So that's this one. I'm gonna return it. Um, again, it was $50 Amazon. Here's the instructions. <laughs> Good luck with those. Um, they're not the greatest. So now onto this guy. Currently I'm in a uh, um, capacity check of this eight amp hour lithium iron phosphate 12 volt battery pack. I uh, charged it up fully with this guy and it's been running almost 12 hours and it's almost pulled out three amp hours in this eight amp hour pack and we're sitting at 13.1 um, volts DC. Um, now, 
this one here, the construction, the uh, the heat sink is uh, more rigid, so it's built a little better. Uh, the fan uh, output, I'm pretty pretty sure the CFM of this is higher than the other one. That's fine, but the but the main thing of this one is it's user friendly interface. It's also got a better interface. Uh, it shows uh, internal battery resistance. Um, it, it, it's just a better unit to control, if you ask me. Now I'm gonna stop this. It's gonna save the information, but I'm gonna do a quick pause on this discharge, okay? And I'm gonna unplug my setup here using these Anderson power poles, which I'll talk about here in a second. Let's, let's talk real quick, get this out of the way. This is a thermocouple temperature, and you see external temperature. That's this guy, see it says 26.9. I'm gonna put my thumb on it, 29, 31, right? So this is kind of cool, <coughs> but honestly, it serves no purpose. <coughs> Excuse me, serves no purpose. What would be great is if they programmed in a cutout at a certain temperature, or you can set a certain temperature for a cutout. Internal temperature, there must be a thermocouple on the board up by the MOSFET, which is your main load. That's your dummy load, this MOSFET that's underneath this heat sink. But let me go over here and uh, just show you here. This is set up, up, down, start, stop, and main settings. So just to go into main settings, you press and hold this. You can go through here and you can clear the cumulative data. So all the testing I did for 12 hours of this, I would clear it if I, if I uh, clicked OK on that. And it would say OK here on the screen, but I don't want to do that. Um, your screen brightness, the voltage reference and current reference, I haven't been able to adjust anything there. So if anyone knows anything about those two settings and how to adjust them or how they would benefit in any adjustment, please let me know. Brightness, standby brightness, standby time, 60 seconds. So in one minute, it'll go to standby, which is a lower brightness, whatever. Kem temperature correction, I haven't, haven't used that. Overpower was 185 watts by default. I lowered it to 60 watts. I don't want to cause any fires. I don't want to burn this thing up. So I, I want to stop anything I'm doing by mistake in excess of 60 watts. Okay. Uh, you can reset to default settings and of course exit. I'll exit. So we come back up to here. You can see I'm I'm uh, drawing a 0.25 amp. I, I you know I want to do a uh, 0.25C discharge to do a proper capacity check of this battery. Now if I press this setup button, you'll see the cursor underneath the uh, IS, which is current. So you can go up to 99.99 amps, but it won't do that. It won't go to that because of its limitations. This is a 20 amp max, uh, 185 watt, folks. So what I like about this is you can cycle through and change the digits up and down fairly quickly and easily and visually. The other unit was horrible for that. Uh, you press and hold, constant current, uh, discharge time. So it's set right now to uh, infinite. So there's no discharge time cut out. This is a feature the other one did not have. So you could say, hey, I wanna discharge this for one hour and stop. You could do that here, which is really cool. Um, constant current, constant resistance, constant power, and constant voltage. Um, not sure how that would help me out at all there. Discharge time again, cutoff voltage, very easy. I've got it set at 10.6 for this lithium iron phosphate, okay? And that's it, pretty much it. Um, the unit here has a PC port where you can get graphing capabilities on a PC. I hear that's pretty uh, finicky to set up. It also has integrated Bluetooth and you can connect a Bluetooth device, but you cannot control this from that device, like an Android or iOS. 
the only real cool thing about it is it'll graph current and voltage for you over time so you'll be able to see a graph now I have a Galaxy S10 I've been unable to use the software to connect to Bluetooth wife has an S21 it works on her phone so I don't know what to think about that again to me this temperature probe is useless um, what else here what else here you got the beep here uh, audible beep you can test USB-C, micro USB, mini USB, and a regular uh, barrel plug uh, power source. Now what I've done is, uh, let me uh, do something quick here. These outboard posts here, this is V plus, V minus, or this is what they call uh, A plus, A minus. So these are the load terminals. So these terminals actually pull the load. This is, uh, v plus and V minus this is terminal voltage so it's measuring the voltage over these two lines and what I did is made a breakout here this breakout so you see the outboard is going to the lower and the inboard for the voltage sense is going to the top and then I made this battery set up to where you could see where I uh, soldered in that extra line that lower gauge 14 gauge line to this uh, clip and the 12 gauge line goes through this, uh, uh, I think this is a 20 amp fuse in there. So this is really nice. I just wanted to plug here on these connectors. I've been using these in the hobby uh, space since the early 2000s. These are called Anderson power poles. They're 30 amp rated. And here are the connectors that you solder in the wire and then you push that connector you push that connector into there and it snaps. And then they're modular, so, um, so you can slide them in like that and also from the top, which is what I did with this breakout. And then I just use this terminal block to also add this um, block to do your USB power bricks and whatnot like these. Uh, so it's all parallel and I can use it easily without swapping things out. So. Um, it comes with a 12 volt power supply where, oh, by the way, the other one came with a nine volt power supply, one amp, and it, uh, it failed within a few days. Amazon shipped me another one, um, and it's been working fine. But again, all of that's gonna go back. I'm not gonna keep that. This one is a 12 volt, one amp. Um, I bought this, they do have this one on Amazon. It's the DL24P, 185 watt. It's $100 on Amazon. I bought this one for $45 from AliExpress. Took three weeks to get to my uh, to get to my house uh, from China. Now, what I wish I'd done is there was another version from A Torch that include another breakout here for uh, metal jacket cell testing, like double A, two thirds A, uh, the 18. Oh, I forgot the number.